Hello there. Paradox just added historical presets for tanks and planes, so I recently subjected myself to hours of pain and historical research to test out whether or not the German presets were any good. And they were. But is that true of all the nations in Hoi 4? Did Paradox do a good job with other countries' presets? What about Germany's fiercest opponent, mustachioed Stalin himself? I'm going to test out all the historical presets for the Soviet Union, see if they hold up to Germany. And not only that, but I'm going to make it harder by only using properly year-appropriate historical designs as well. That's right, it's more endless hours trawling through World War II history nerd websites to find specific divisional organizational structure. Can I hold against Germany? Can Big Bristly Mustache Man beat Thin Mustache Man? Why not like the video and stick around to find out? And hell, why not subscribe for even more silly challenges? Right, so here we are. We're going to be going very historical and doing the historical path, which of course means going down the center, which is of course on the left of the focus tree. God damn it, paradox. And going pretty standard research to begin with. We're going to be doing quite a lot of civ greed until 39, but also a lot of infrastructure in states with resources because we're gonna need them. The first thing we're gonna have to change is our infantry. There isn't a lot of data out there for pre-Barbarossa Soviet army stuff, but I do have something for the 1939 infantry, so this is gonna change. It's gonna be horrible. I'll show you the horror that I have to work to a bit later, but for now, Let's just say I need a lot of light tanks. And speaking of, here is the first problem. We already start with a BT-7 and it's, you know, it's fine. It's, it's a light tank. Of all the tanks I've seen, it's one of them. But I didn't say just the historical tanks. I said the presets that Paradox gives us. And for some reason, the preset for the BT-7 is different than the one you start with. It's, it's similar. It's just different. I, I don't know why but it is, so we'll change that when we have the army XP. The same thing exists for the Soviet fighter. The I-16 that you start with is pretty boring and kind of lame, just some machine guns, but the one that comes with a preset is way better. It has a cannon. Why, Paradox? Why is this different? There's also no cast whatsoever, but we do get a preset one, the LBSH, which weirdly has engines too, but whatever, we'll make it when we can. And as in the Germany video, I'm going to do one more painful step of historical realism and only use the military industrial organizations that historically made the tanks. This is kind of hard because I'm not really familiar with the Soviet tank designers, but I'm gonna have to learn. Which is especially hard because there are so many! And the worst part of playing the Soviet Union. The paranoia system. I hate it so much. We're just gonna beeline down that to get rid of it whenever we can, doing industrial focuses in between. And of course that great trick of leaving the event open when you get the big purges to maximize the amount of paranoia that actually gets removed. We're also going to send some mountaineers to Spain, as well as an attaché, to both get XP, but also to get enough war support so that I can go war economy very early. There's one absolutely massive problem with the whole premise of this video, and it's to do with these focuses here, superior war machine and Soviet artillery. You might think these are a bit weird to have in the focus tree, because why do I want to rush down anti-tank ahead of time? But trust me, I'll show you a little bit later, but without them, I literally will not be able to play the game. At the very least, it's time to start the basic medium tank chassis, and I'm going to assign it to the correct designer, which is the fast tank designer I have learned in my research. Because everyone knows you want your medium tanks to go fast. Not be strong, not be powerful, no no, fast. Speaking of stupid decisions, we just got the basic heavy tank chassis, which automatically gives us the KV-1. But again, we can't use it. I have to use the presets. So let's click on the heavy tank chassis preset and... What do you know? There is no KV-1. Paradox forgot to put it in. Instead, we have the T-35. And what is the T-35? I have to build the presets. That's the rule. So I'm gonna. And it's... Also not actually that terrible a tank. It's got way too many turrets, as the T-35 did, but hey, I make do. Basically the same thing happens with the basic medium chassis. As soon as I unlock it, I get the A-20 tank template, but I have to use the presets. And there is no A-20. Instead I get the T-32. Two of them. I've tried researching this tank, and it appears to have been a prototype for the T-34, but... Whatever, I, I guess I'll build it. I have to pick one. For some reason, one of them has a cannon and the other one has a close support gun. If I was doing meta, I would do the close support gun because this is a single player, but I'm going to use the regular cannon because that seems more historical appropriate. All right, I finally got rid of the paranoia system. Now I can really focus on getting down my focus tree. And to celebrate, how about we finally make the 1939 infantry division template? I did a whole bunch of research for this and I'm so upset with what I discovered. This is what I start with, and this is what I have to end up with. 
As you can see, it's a bit weird. It specifies a light tank battalion. And because it has 57 light tanks, that is too much for just light armored reconnaissance support company. So I do actually have to put a light tank battalion in my infantry, making basically just crappy space marines. It also needs to have proper frontline artillery, so this is what we get. It has to have the light tank, the two artillery, and the support companies have to have anti-tank, armored cars for some reason, and a signal company. It's not actually too bad of a division, but it is horrendously expensive. Look at this, 9,000 light tank deficit. <laughs> oh god. And there's the German deck on Poland. Nothing to do with me. I'm not a part of this. No sorry. I will, however, just take a little nosy into Finland. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was very easy. They just put up no resistance whatsoever. Thank you, Finland. I, I do actually have to take the historical option as well, with just the concessions, because I'm doing history. And since we're so locked to history, I think it's time I told you about the really stupid thing that might screw me. I just got the improved medium tank chassis. That means I get the T-34, right? No, you'd be wrong, because for some reason the T-34 preset requires the improved high-velocity cannon as its main armament which is unlocked by the 1942 anti-tank tech. That's right, I won't be able to get my T-34 until 1942. However, not entirely true. As I mentioned, these focuses are vital. The first one actually gives you a T-34 template, which I cannot use, but the second one gives me ahead of time penalty reduction modifiers for support artillery. So all I need to do is have had research the 1940 anti-tank, take this focus, then quickly research the next two techs in the anti-tank line, and then finally I will be able to start making the T-34s. So I won't have to wait till 1942, but I will have to wait ages, and I really need to start getting my tanks online. The reason this happens, by the way, is because Paradox has made the T-34 preset the 1943 T-34. I know, wordy. Which is the upgrade to the T-34 to help fight German tanks. The actual first T-34 had a pretty crappy gun. But I am bound by my rules, I will wait until I can build the proper T-34 from the presets. Ugh. Might as well make the proper tank design as well. And this one, this one's painful. This is the starting template that you get for tanks. And this is what it has to look like. Yeah, I know, it's confusing. But based on my research, this is what it translates to. Yup, it's horrible. It's got heavy tanks, loads of medium tanks, and two light tanks. Very little motorized infantry, motorized artillery, and anti-air. This division is complete poop. It has no organization. Fun historical note, they actually should not be light tanks. They should be flame tanks. For some reason, the Soviets had a bunch of flame tanks in their tank divisions. But Paradox forgot to put a flame tank preset for the Soviet Union, so I am not allowed to make any flame tanks. So I'm just going to use regular light tanks, which is a problem because I'm already drowning in a light tank deficit for my infantry. At least we can make the Il-2 Cass a surprisingly decent little plane. We can also make the improved fighter, the Lag-3, and it's fine. It's got a really powerful engine for what is basically very little armament, but hey, whatever. But what I really care about is the glorious T-34. It is actually a good tank, look at it, it's got sloped armor, that very powerful gun, plenty of engines, welded armor. I am just going to put as many factories as possible onto this thing and fill out my tank divisions because I think that's going to be the only way I can win. Because it is 1941, I've got to get ready. And this is how things stand, I am scared. I have five full armies on the German border, an elite mountaineer army on the Hungarian, and two armies on the Romanian border. My divisions are very under-equipped, they're low in artillery, and they're low in tanks, but we're ready, I guess. My tank divisions are very weak and few in number as well, but you know, we're just going to hold and hope that we can build up. And no, I am not going to abandon all my land and just retreat to the river. I am playing this historically. That means I'm going to lose units. Oh god, I've been so focused on the industry focuses, I haven't started going down the military path. i got to rush it. Oh god. Oh, here it comes. It's a bit late because it's July, but ah, Africa is also completely lost to the Axis, so all of Italian forces are probably going to come to my border. But wh why are they not attacking me yet? It's, it's August. Oh god, I don't have any troops in the Norway border. Oh, thank goodness they didn't attack me in time. I, I'd have just forgotten about that. There it is. Finally, it's September. What the hell, Germany? You kind of missed your opening. 
It honestly gave me time to get more mill focuses, so thanks Germany. I have an infantry army on Finland and a few tanks. I'm hoping I can just finish off Finland pretty quickly so I can move everyone down south as a reserve. Alright, the first battles have begun and it's not looking too bad. Obviously we are losing quite a lot of the fights and our planes are getting demolished, but m maybe we should just stand them down. <laughs> we don't have enough. Sadly, only Britain will give me land lease and only anti-air, but hey, every little bit helps. Oh, hey, look, maybe our air force isn't doing too bad. Oh, God, never mind. Oh, it shifted. Oh, it shifted so fast. Okay, never mind. Stand down, stand down. All right, the first breakthroughs have occurred. We are getting pushed back a little bit. Oh, okay, no, this is actually going pretty badly. Romania is falling, and I think I'm going to lose the entirety of my elite mountaineers. Oh, God. I think it's time to pull back to the rivers. Let's just start their little retreat process. Let's also start some emergency forts behind the river. I think they're necessary. I'm trying to do some tank counterattacks, but they do basically no damage because of their low organization. They just fall apart. Oh, yeah, there it is. The first encirclement. Oh, God. That's it. Fall back. Everyone fall back to the line. Let's make a new one. We're hiding behind the river. Luckily, Finland died pretty easily, so I can at least move the troops that are there down south. They are hitting us really heavily on the river, but we're holding, and we're super close to 1942, which is when we can finally fix our troops. I need to get away from these bad divisions. Okay, the river at Gomel has just been breached, but it doesn't matter, because it's the 1st of January, which means I can change my divisions. Based on research, this is what a 1942 infantry division should look like, and it stays pretty much the same until the end of the war. So, I think this is pretty close. Look at that, it's a 9-3. There's also some good evidence that there was a motorized recon. It has anti-tank and anti-air. But other than that, it's a simple division. No tanks drawing fuel. Just good soft attack. I, I like this. We can also fix the tank division. Took me ages to realize that for some reason the USSR actually changed the name of their tank divisions to tank cores. And that really stumped me for a while because I kept looking up the wrong thing, but this is what the 1942 tank corps roughly looked like. The key thing here, I can take off the heavy tanks, which are a huge resource draw. They will get added back on later, but right now I just need them gone, and it will also improve my organization. I can also get rid of the motorized anti-air, and the only thing I don't have ready right now is I do need some self-propelled artillery, which apparently was a whole regiment's worth, so I'm going to go make that. And it's going to be super easy because we took off light tanks from all of our infantry divisions, meaning I have thousands of BT-7s just sitting in the stockpile. So I'm going to convert them to a light self-propelled gun. Using the same preset gives us this Su-26, which is extremely crappy, but it's going to add lots of soft attack to our divisions, so I don't mind. I'm continuously training divisions as they all start to reconfigure to their new templates, and it also means that I can just pop divisions down any time a gap appears on the line and just slap them in and fight the Germans. Most interesting thing though is I'm actually starting to win the air war. I don't know what's happening, but my planes are starting to beat them. I've got like 20 factories on fighters, and I think it's because the presets are surprisingly strong with a cannon and loads of thrust over weight. So all my guys just win dogfights. It's going to take years to whittle down the air force, of course, but hey, it's a start. All right, the whole reforming of the army has caused some losses. We've lost a bit in the south, but we held Crimea, which is what matters. I've pulled everyone back to a bit more of a defensive posture with four back lines, and honestly, it's just fine. I'm doing a lot of small little targeted attacks with tanks anytime they overextend, but honestly, I cannot do much damage because my tank divisions are still reforming, but also are still really crappy. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. I've been losing battles for ages right now, I just haven't had the right numbers of troops, and too many are stuck in the west. It's because I have both a front line and a fallback line. So the army is split unequally between the two of them. Ah, god damn it. We're also almost out of manpower, so I'm going to go up to extensive conscription to try to defeat that problem. We've also got the new heavy tank chassis, so we can now build from presets the KV-1 or the KV-2. We're just going to make the regular heavy tank one because the KV-2 is actually an artillery. And this is very relevant because later on, the 1944 tank corps has either a heavy tank battalion or a heavy self-propelled artillery battalion. I'm just going to go the heavy tank for now because I think I like them more armor, so we'll start building them now in advance. I've also made a huge rookie mistake. I've gone to Total Moby and I delayed going to extensive conscription, so I am now at zero manpower. I can fix it by moving down to War Economy, but it's going to take me ages to mobilize up. 
All right, it's basically the end of summer 42, and we've done it. We've held them. They cannot push more. They're still destroying us in the air war, but I'm building up planes. D don't worry, just wait. Now that we're going into winter, let's do the military reorganization, making us very weak, but fixing our military spirits over time. Please don't attack me during this. All right, now we can finally go lessons of war. We are actually going to be fixing our military. Get ready, mustache man. And with that complete, we can start to do offensive operations, including Operation Bagration. We'll, we'll wait a little while for that one, though. I want to wait until we have slightly better tanks. Right, we're starting to massively struggle with our tanks. We do do some damage, but they just throw us back because of low org. I think the only way I'm going to win, other than just waiting, is building tons of tank divisions and just having them everywhere. Wow, it's like real history. Also, I finally done positive heroism, so I can have Zukov as the field marshal. That is going to make a huge difference for my tanks. Which I really need, because my limited offensives in the summer of 43 completely failed. I think I took like one tile. Presets are not super strong, but it's okay. I just got the new medium tank chassis. And this means I can finally upgrade my tank to the T-44. Now, historically, there weren't actually a ton of these in the Soviet forces. There were about 2,000 by the end of the war. But hey, I'm doing the presets. I'm going to start building this tank en masse. It'll cause a temporary shortage of medium tanks, but overall, long term, I think will really help. Oh god, it's so expensive in steel. Oh, my resources. Also, I'm so busy microing and focusing on my own line. D-Day's happened. Vichy is being invaded, and France has invaded in the west and the south. This is brilliant. And we're finally unlocking our doctrines. Fast offensives. Infantry combat with reduction, but more importantly, reduction of supply consumption for everyone. This is going to be the thing that's going to allow me to finally start attacking. Also, the fact that we've shot down thousands of enemy planes, giving us a very slight edge in the air war. It's now 1944, so let's move to the proper end game tank core. This is what it looks like based on my research, and this is, I think, what I would convert it to. It's finally got rid of all of its light tanks. It has one heavy tank battalion. It brings back the anti-air, but it also has light and medium SP artillery. And finally, this is maybe a bit of a stretch, but looking at the amount of equipment inside the division, sorry, the core, there are a variety of half-tracks. Though they do not constitute their own battalion, they are split amongst the whole division. And there are enough of them, I think, to necessitate the addition of a mechanized battalion, which not only improves hardness, actually gives us more organization. Oh, thank you. I also don't actually have a medium SP artillery, but we can start to do that by utilizing our leftover T-34s. So, oh yeah. So we will start making the Su-122 preset. Also, D-Day has expanded, which means that the German Air Force has moved west. We control the skies. It's time. Go, 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 go. Everybody go on the offensive. Everybody attack. Screw your lives. Let's go. And we've got loads of tank divisions. We can't seem to pierce the southern and eastern side, but the northern front has completely collapsed. Obviously, having a massive air force is really helping. <laughs> hey, look, we even have a mini Corlin pocket. <laughs> Get wrecked. Also, it's a bit late, but I've just realized I've been struggling with resources all game. I moved to free trade early in the game. I could have changed at any time. Oh god, there we go. All my resource problems are fixed. Okay, my divisions are really strong right now. They're just collapsing the German line. Also, we finally got mechanized wave in the doctrines. Incredibly good. It adds tons of organization to everything in my tanks, so they can finally keep going and attack. I think it's time to use those early operations to give us a little bit of a bonus, but I actually don't think we even need it. Because Denmark has joined, oh baby. Oh my god, okay, D don't at me in the comments please. But I forgot to assign anyone to my officer corps. I could have had like 15% bonuses to all my infantry and tanks. I just completely forgot. I didn't need it though because I'm in Berlin. All right, there we go. Yeah, it's just a question of continuing to push down. I'm going to ignore the Yalta conference, and I'm going to just do my own peace deal. But there it is. I have defeated Germany using only historical division designs and the presets that Paradox gives you. I had a great time, and I hope you did as well. If you have enjoyed the video, do be sure to leave a like and a comment down below, letting me know your thoughts and suggestions for future videos. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so with memberships or by clicking the Patreon link below. I was Aldra Hill, and I'll continue to be. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.